In our last episode, Sandy McNeil encountered a large black dog on the lonely moor in the middle of the night. At first he tried to coax it back where it came from, but it wouldn't go, and he was surprised because most dogs obeyed him right away. But he thought, well, I'll invite it to my house, feed it, then it'll probably go back where it came from. So they traveled along in the cool night air. And when Sandy looked to the west, he saw a wicked bank of clouds coming towards him. And then it was a vicious storm. Thunder crashed and the lightning flashed. And they walked along bravely. And Sandy turned up his coat collar and he was getting drenched. It seemed to take forever. Finally, his house came into view and they, he could picture himself sitting inside before the fire. Sandy showed the dog his house. He said, well, it's nothing fancy, but you're welcome to come in and dry off. When they first got inside, it was dark as anything until Sandy lit a candle. And then it, he got his fire going, and it was getting very cozy, and he went off to get the dog something to eat. Sandy came back with the food and said, oh, you must be hungry, lad. But it didn't seem interested in the food at all. He said, oh, you must need some encouragement. He reached out to touch it. Got the shock of his life. It was not a real dog at all. It was a ghost dog. He said, oh, he was so flustered. He said, I better settle down. And he went to get his pipe. Ah, then when he started smoking his pipe, the room settled down. He settled down and the fire died down. And he heard the ticking of the clock. He said, my father always said, when there was a ghost, it came from the other side to deliver a message. Uh, in the morning, I'll sort it out, but for now, I'm going to bed. Well, ghost dog or no ghost dog, Sandy had chores to do the next morning. He got up to feed the animals. And he fed the chickens first. The dog tug tagged right along, and none of the animals seemed to be bothered by the ghost dog at all, so it put Sandy more at ease. Finished feeding the chickens, went to feed the horse, then the cow, and then the pig. The pig was especially excited. And he had a little time to just stand and talk to the dog, and it seemed to really understand him. He was developing a bond. But Sandy didn't have much time to enjoy his new friendship because his neighbor Angus came over on the pretext of wanting to borrow a tool. But really, Angus had seen something from his farm a mile away, and he was curious. So he barged right into the house, being the big fool that he was, and he said, Sandy, you've got a dog. Sandy Pierce said, oh, I wouldn't touch it if I were you. But Angus didn't pay attention. He went over and realized it was a ghost dog. The haste of his departure was amazing. Sandy said, don't say I didn't warn you. After that, Sandy's life became a living hell. On the occasion that he went into town, every single person commented about his dog, whether at the pub, the church, or the grocery store. Everyone wanted to know all about it. Several gave him some pointed advice, and some even said, It's a creature of the devil. You ought to get rid of it. For the most part, Sandy kept silent, but one day things came to a head. Sandy had just arrived in the village one day when young Jimmy McAllister said, Can I see your dog? Oh, quit pestering me, he said. Then the butcher said, you got to get rid of that dog. He's not so bad, said Sandy. Then the priest came out and said, I'll rid you of your unholy demon. He's not a demon, Sandy said. Mind your own business, and he went off home. When Sandy got home, he was still so mad that he kicked his bucket right over the ghost dog's head. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, ghost dog. But the ghost dog leapt up, ran up the stairs, and disappeared right into the wall above the landing. What's going on, said Sandy. And then he looked closer, and he saw that the brick mortar was a different color. He said, what's going on? Somebody re-bricked this. I don't know how many years ago, but what's behind this wall? And he kept going with his chisel and his hammer, and he saw something yellow behind the bricks kept chiseling and chiseling and chiseling and what should he see but he started to see stacks of gold he realized this is the golden treasure from my great grandfather malcolm Sandy's fortunes were vastly improved after that. He even fixed up his house and got married, had a whole bunch of children. The only problem was every once in a while he missed that ghost dog. But oh well. <laughs>